In this video, we're going to have a look at my top 10 features that were released or updated in 2025. As we wind down towards the Christmas holidays, I wanted to do this roundup video just to showcase some of the new features that came out this year that either changed the way that I work with Power BI reports or just features that I generally thought were really cool. So let's start with number 10, the Fabric Org Apps, or Org Apps for short. This feature allows you to bundle up multiple reports into one single app that you can easily share to your users. It's a new version of the currently existing Workspace apps, and it provides a lot of new features like being able to create multiple apps in a workspace, more branding options. I like this version of Org Apps because it lets you create multiple Org Apps per workspace and you can create one for each group that you want to share it to. It lets me choose my own branding colors as opposed to the preset colors that the workspace apps give. And it also doesn't require you to update your app whenever you publish your report into the workspace unlike workspace apps. I wasn't going to include this in the list since it was actually released last year and also it required you to have a fabric capacity or fabric license to be able to use this feature. But as of this year, they've made this org app feature available to pro users as well. So definitely give this one a go if you haven't yet. The next one is the semantic model refresh templates, which were released as part of the August 2025 update. This feature allowed you to set up sequential refreshes between your data flows or semantic models. Sequential refresh is basically when you have two items linked, say a semantic model that gets its data from a data flow, you want the data flow to refresh first, then refresh the semantic model only when the data flow refresh is completed and is successful. For the longest time, Power BI has never really had a native way to support this until the August update, which allowed you to orchestrate this easily using Data Factory with pre-made templates. Since it is in Data Factory, with a bit more tinkering, you can even add other nodes for other actions, like maybe you want to send a notification when a refresh has failed, or send an email to let people know if the refresh is complete, or other actions that you might want to happen based on the refresh results from this template. I think this feature deserves a spot in this list, just because it gives developers a way to access sequential refreshes without the complications of setting up a data factory. Number eight is the semantic model version refresh history. This is a built-in feature in the Power BI service that stores up to five versions of your semantic models when you edit your reports on the web. This allows you to easily revert back to an earlier version if the changes that you made had errors or if you simply wanted to restore to an older version. Now, this doesn't replace your kind of source control solutions like Git, but it does give you a bit of a safety net when you're making updates or changes on your reports on the web. On the topic of Power BI service, the number seven on my list is actually a combination of features, editing your model, Power Query Editor Online, and Performance Analyzer. All of these features are now available in the Power BI service. Editing your model online allows you to manage things like creating DAX measures, creating your columns and tables, managing relationships. The Power Query Editor Online lets you do your typical get and transform data, and this is useful if you need to clean up your data tables before loading it onto your model. Whereas the Performance Analyzer is handy for checking your report loads performance. These features, combined with things like Report Editing Online, basically lets you do the full report development process entirely on the web. This is a great alternative for developers with limitations like having a MacBook or those with no machines powerful enough to run Power BI Desktop. It's also a great alternative if you want to make small changes very quickly. Now, this doesn't replace Power BI Desktop as your main development environment because Power BI Desktop will have the full range of all the features that you can do in, or you can create in Power BI Desktop, which will not be mostly available in the online versions of them, but it's a great alternative for those that need it. The next two features are probably my most favorite features this year, and I really enjoyed covering them in a few of my videos recently, but looking at the views on these videos, they don't seem to be the kind of most popular topic. This one, number six, is the style presets. It was released as part of the March 2025 feature update, and it basically allows you to save customization settings into presets that you can reuse in the future. 
So maybe you like your titles to be always in bold. Maybe you want your labels to be always at the bottom. Or maybe you want to always have rounded border in your visuals. With a bit of JSON magic, you can set this up in a style preset as part of your theme. Your visuals can now all look consistent, which will save you a lot of time formatting your visuals. And it gives you the ability to manage them all in one place and flexible enough to give you various style preset options if you want to set them up. The only downside is that you cannot create the style presets yourself inside Power BI. So either you need to use third party tools like Power UI or edit it yourself in JSON. The next one is also pretty good. Number five, which are the org themes. Org themes basically allow you to upload your JSON theme files onto Power BI service, which gives everyone in your tenant access to those themes by default. This addition is good if you want to encourage your Power BI developers in your organization to keep a clean, consistent visual styles that follows your organization branding. The best thing about this is if everyone uses the same org theme, if you ever need to update the org theme, like change the title placings or change the colors, any changes that you make to the org theme will cascade to all reports that use that theme, which to me is pretty amazing. The only downside to this is obviously the single point of failure. And it's something that I have noticed recently where the Power BI team updates the theme schema. The schema is basically the set of rules that your themes must follow. And if the schema gets updated and has a new mandatory rule, for example, that your theme does not follow, it can have a negative effect on your report visual. So it is powerful, but just use it with care. Number four is an interesting one. Translatical task flows. This is a feature that allows you to perform various actions directly from Power BI reports. So this could be things like write backs to your SQL records, triggering other actions, adding annotations, and you can do all of these without leaving your Power BI reports. This empowers your users to perform simple tasks like writing back to a SQL database or set up things like approval workflows, which are the typical use cases for this. I recognize the power of this feature just because it lets you users or it gives them the ability to perform basic actions without leaving their Power BI reports. This next one, MCP Server, is a relatively new feature that came out just last month, and it allows you to use your favorite LLMs, language learning models, to update your semantic models for you. Like any other LLMs, you simply ask it in natural language and it will update your semantic model, create measures, update relationships, even perform bulk tasks. I covered it in a recent video and while it is most certainly in preview, it can help you with a lot of boring or repetitive tasks like documentation or doing bulk updates to your semantic model. Just be careful if you're using LLMs or AI in general, especially if you're feeding it production data and especially if you're letting it update your semantic model for you. The next one, number two, is actually the TMDL feature. This is basically a new view like the DAX query view that allows you to programmatically work with your semantic models. Its main use case, I think for me, is its ability to bulk update things like measures, columns, and also the ability to let you migrate your measures from one report to another, which really saved me a handful of times as the alternative would have been to basically painstakingly recreate each of my measures one by one to my new report. For most users, this feature will probably fly under their radars because it's not really a feature that is absolutely necessary to know. But trust me, even learning just the basic things that you can do with it can help you in the future. So check out my video on it if you haven't yet. In that video, I use some example scenarios which does not require you to learn the Team DL language at all. And the last feature and the most impressive update that I think was released this year are the UDFs, user-defined functions. These are basically custom functions that you can create in your model for your DAX expressions. It was released as part of the September 2025 update, and it allows developers to simplify their DAX measures and create their own custom reusable functions. This means you can create a set of custom functions, so you can simply call them like any other functions. Best of all, you can include this as part of your templates so your basic or most used functions will always be ready and available. 
And the best part is you can author this in TMDL. So if you ever need to migrate your custom functions from one report to another, you can simply use TMDL to do the bulk migration for you, saving you a lot of time from recreating all of these custom functions over and over. And that's really it for my list this year. Thank you very much for tuning in to my channel. Merry Christmas to you all and see you on my next videos. See ya.